How about investing in the U.S. from outside the country? We actually do have investors that are outside the country that invest with us. Um, and it's all just paperwork. Depends on what country you're in, um, how hard it is. Uh, some countries, it's hard for them to even get money out of the country. And um, other countries, it's easy. So that all depends. I know that United States is really good for uh, driving returns right now. And in a lot of other countries, especially like Canada, they can't hardly get any yield. Their inflation, I mean, their appreciation is crazy on their property, but you can't get any yield, man. The cap rates are so compressed. So uh, reach out to us if you're interested in that, and we'll put you. We got an investor questionnaire that we have to have filled out before we start talking to people about projects. That's part of the SEC uh, regulation, and I'll have my attorney speak on that. Actually, if you guys are really interested, man, we do have deals, uh, a lot of deals that are that are good deals, too, um, that we feel like are good deals. And we can't really even show you the numbers on them. We can show you the numbers on deals that we've done in the past. But um, just reach out to me if you guys are interested in investing and you're an accredited investor. Can I have an out-of-state tax guy? Uh, yeah, I don't know why you couldn't. I mean, there's some people that use people overseas. The IRS, I don't think, really cares about that. You just have to understand. I don't know if there's a certain license that you got to have. So I can't really answer that. I mean, my guy's out-of-state. You know, he's not in Ohio. So, um, you know, I, I, I yeah, I, I think you can, but I really don't know the rules and regulations behind that. So, but yeah, I, I think it's perfectly legal to have one outside of your state. Nate, is it typically a good sign or bad for an investor looking to buy a house when a lawyer is selling a property instead of a real estate agent? No, nah, that's really good because uh, that means that it was in probate a lot of times. Um, and, and attorneys, that is one of the best lead generators. You get it when an attorney and say, Hey, look, man, you see attorneys get properties and let's say somebody inherited the property. Now the attorney's involved, it's in probate, which is a court. And then you got to, those are, you can make a lot of money off them because the attorney isn't looking to absolutely get retail. He's just looking to get rid of the property at a fair value which a lot of times you get distressed real estate there. So, man, if you got an, a, a plug on an attorney, call them, say, hey, I want to be your go-to person. Any property you get, I want to make your life easy, Mr. Attorney. I want to bring these, uh, you bring me the deals. I'll get you a fair market uh, value. That's how you identify and find properties in a tight market. I know a guy in Cincinnati who makes millions a year dealing with probate. I'll see if I can get him on our podcast. Uh, you know what? I will. I'll get him on. Um, I'll get him on to share some of that information with you guys and how he works it out. Let's say there's five family members. He'll come in and two of them don't get along. He'll come in. He'll bridge the gap. He'll get all five of them to sign the paperwork. He'll get the deal done. So the attorney calls him because he'll go in and negotiate where the attorney maybe gets stuck and can't. What's the best resource to get info on what's coming to a town or uh, city before the news gets it? Well, I mean, we have like paid subscriptions on stuff. Um, but the business courier, call the local building department, find out what the, what the, I mean, there's one that we gave out to you that was free. It was bestplaces.net, but you know, look for job growth. And I don't really know if I could tell you one in particular, we use Ursi, which that's a paid membership. Um, so bestplaces.net is okay, but really drill down into the area that you want to go to and call up the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, um, commerce or whatever it's called. The business commerce say, hey, what kind of new jobs do you have coming? I'm looking to maybe develop in, in this community. Um, and I want to know what you guys are doing and kind of interview them. Say, what makes your town so special? And I'm looking to bring money into your community, invest with you guys. Why should I do that? Ask them. They say, well, screw you. Then you say, probably, well find somebody else to talk to, or maybe that's not a city you want to invest your money. What's your thoughts money. on buying land just to hold? It's, it's uh, speculative and it doesn't have any cash flow. So it's like buying gold. Maybe it goes up, maybe it goes down, but in the meantime, it doesn't get you anything, man. It can hurt you. The return has to be astronomical because when's the disposition going to be? If it has no income coming in and it costs you uh, you got to upkeep it. What if people dump on it? You got to pay the taxes on it. You got to have insurance on it in case somebody gets hurt out there. 
Um, I don't like just land banking. Now I do land bank areas where I'll come in and I'll assemble a lot of properties that have cash flow, and I will have infill lots in there too. But that's because I'm trying to assemble an acre or something where you know uh, I'm, I know that area is coming up, and I just want to buy and hold it, and I'll put it in a portfolio with other things that have cash flow. So, but as far as buying a piece of land and then you going to work to pay for it to lose money, I mean. I don't like that idea unless it's like it's worth 10,000 an acre. It could be worth a million an acre because you could rezone it. But other than that, I don't know, man. I mean, it's too many different variables for me to give you an honest opinion. If I saw the piece of land, I knew the piece of land, maybe my answer would be different. When doing a bird deal with partners, raising money from outside investors, how do you typically structure the deal? Well, I listen to my investors. What is your goal? What are you looking to get? And then I see if I can make a deal work and reach their goals. Always listen to your investors. It's not about you. It's about your investors. It's about what they want. Um, they can invest their money in plenty of places. So what's going to set you aside and make you different? That's it. And don't feel like your investors are too greedy if they want, you know, 50%. If they want 50% and you don't have somebody willing to give it to you at 40%, then that's probably in line with your experience and the deal. I'm rehabbing a house for a rental and was wondering, do you use the glue down vinyl plank flooring or the ones that float? We use a floating. Um, the house is from 1905. Yeah, you really probably the flooring on 1905 may be wavy a little bit. Um, but I would use... He rebuilt the subfloor to level it. Yeah, I, I will. I, we just don't use the glue down. It's not as it, that, that's a little more flimsy and cheaper. We use a 12 mil with a backing on it with a 10 year commercial warranty and we get it installed at 285 a foot. Um, anybody in the Cincinnati region or northern Kentucky, um, I can hook you up with my flooring guy. He's amazing. He has 22 crews and he is maybe charge you a little more than 285 unless you're doing a bunch of volume, but it's great flooring, beautiful colors. Um, and we can't even buy it and have it installed. It cost us more. So he gave us, he went to, to, to uh, I think he went out of the country and had so much of this made just for what we're using and other people. And he got us, he, he won our business over is what he did. Cause I was like, dude, you, you're too high. And he came back. He said, what about this? I, was, I said, well, bring it to me. Let me see it. And he brought it and I was like, man, this is some good form. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, Nate Barger on YouTube and hit the bell and you'll be notified on any new videos that come out.